Wilson, this is a demo. I apologize real quick. We have that setup coming back from the show as rudimentary as can be. We are still on pallets and so forth. So, but still, I think I can easily demonstrate what you need to know. This is the new Edge Master, and what you see in here is a the major compon components of the tool set. The inside die with the alignment block underneath, which aligns against this massive corner on the technology unit. Then, on top of it, you have the pressure foot that comes down, which has a corner in the back that is matching the radius that you want to make, in your case, six millimeters. Then next to it, the roll, which moves up and down. So as you put the material in, and I'll demonstrate that to you, what you are pre-bending is what we need to match on the radius of the tool. The material goes in, then the safety door, which is out here when the door is closed, comes down. The pressure foot comes down, so nobody, the safety door comes down, nobody can put their hand in there. And then the roll starts to come down. As the roll comes down, these cam followers push these side arms in and push the side arm, with the side arm, push the material onto the die, and then the roll forms down. And then, when your inside die is exactly the same as your flange height, then, and this is hard to see, the internal knife will cut off at the bottom edge of the tool. And that would then all be one passage. If you are not using that afterwards, you would be going to the C100, which gauges off the bottom of the flange here with the supports, so that when you put your part in, it basically trims wherever this flange is. So if you had a C100, then you can do varying flange heights without any tool change or anything. So if you had the same material, the same corner radius, but you had varying flange height with a C100 without any changes to the machine, you could produce those different parts. Uh, obviously, that is an investment that has a cost. Now, when you first start the machine up, you have a safety switch up here, which is when you open it, it basically gives you a red blinking light. You need to confirm that you are basically um, don't have an e-stop condition. Then the first thing that the machine does is you need to set the height of your, of your die, that thickness plus the material thickness, on here so that you uh, can make a safety check, so that the door knows when it's in position and at the same time it needs to sense material on the tip. So when you turn into automatic mode, the first thing that it tells you is safety check, a position check with the safety switch is needed. You hit the green button and the foot switch at the same time. Then, basically, it activates the first stroke, if you do that, and um, you have f formed your first corner. Now, since my die is taller than my flange, now I need to go and trim this off over here, which we're doing here like this right now. And then, when you're done, you have a perfect corner that is immediately more or less paintable. You probably want to oscillate the corner a little bit and get rid of a small burr or a very sharp edge that wouldn't cover very well in paint. Now, this was the automatic. You see that you have a very clear screen with very clear instructions. In your, um, in that screen you can also put in programs for different parts that you see and that you can store. And in those uh, programs, what you have 
is you can, uh, and I'll go back into automatic mode, you can set certain things. For example, the final position for the roller tool. And that is how far the roll stops from the bottom edge of the inside die. You can also program whether you have the positioning on, I explained that before, or whether you have internal cutting on or off. And you also can tell it how many additional roll cycles you want to have. So, then from there you can go into systems, which gives you all your inputs, all your outputs, your PLC data. So this is all very good for tr uh, troubleshooting. Your analog values, basically, for your uh, cylinder settings and your force settings, your in percentage, and um, your error logs, which errors you had before, okay? Obviously, this is nothing right now because we had the machine turned off on the way over here. So, now, going into exit, you also can run the machine in manual mode. In manual mode, you have the four different functions. And I'll put the parts back in. The first function in manual is a door. It tells me right now I'm open. And then, when I want to close it, I do go here and I hit the foot switch. At this point, it tells me that my safety switch is green and that also the part sensor sees metal. Then I'm going to bring my pressure foot down. So now we have 80 bars of pressure on the pressure foot. And now I bring my roll down and I'm going to bring it down to position, which is a four millimeter that we had. So you see it stopped at 3.9 millimeter as we programmed four millimeter. So it didn't roll all the way down, so I'm not putting pressure on the edge. At that point, I can go up with this again. And only when it's in the full up position, then I can close, for example, the internal knife, which now comes forward. And you heard it clip a little bit, basically the excess that was hanging over the die on the bottom. That's the internal cutoff tool. So we are opening this again. We are coming up with our pressure foot. And we are opening the door. And what you see here is now basically the formed corner and you see that we have a little bit of a trim. So this is how tall the die is. And that ultimately when you want to roll parts all in one setting without having to go to the C100, that is basically how the part would come out. I'm going to demonstrate that to you in automatic. Um, we're exiting here. We're going back into automatic. And now what we're doing is we're turning the internal cutting on. No. Demo, come on. Uh, I have to go to the recipe. Internal cutting, we're going to turn this on. Also, you have additional roll cycles. Additional roll cycles means if you want to have more than one roll step to uh, form your corner. So instead of the roll coming down once, it can come down twice, three times, or four times, which is very good for stainless steel to remove any dents and so forth. So for example, we can give it one additional roll cycle. Okay? So now the roll would uh, roll twice over the part. So we go back into automatic. And hang on, I didn't do that very well. Um, position on, internal cutting on, store to recipe. recipe. Exit on, 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 clear. Very good. So, now we go. This. So, we have one roll cycle, second roll cycle. And you also hear the, with the sound that you hear, that's a frequency inverter speeding up the hydraulic pump as we go. And again, like I say, it formed a corner and it clipped the access off. As you see, this is flush at the bottom. If you really want to have it flush, of course, you need to do the external cut because, again, my part is lower in the flange than the actual tool. And here you have the corner with the tool. Okay, so um, that is a quick demo of the unit. Um, I'll go around real quick with you through the doors also. Here's where you have your major hookups. You have the quick, if you have the C100, you have the quick connect for the C100 for the hydraulic couplings and the electrical collection for the C100. Like I say, it's all plug and play. 
This is a quick connection for the foot pedal uh, and the electrical connection. Also, you hook up air on this side. And then on the other side, you have the hydraulic tank. It's kind of dark. Yeah. I hope you can see. I hope you have enough light. You have the frequency inverter for the hydraulic pump, very quiet, saves you a lot of energy. You have the main hydraulic unit and you have the oil cooler. The system also has a warm oil temperature warning and then a hot oil temperature shut off if you ever overload it, which has never happened to me yet, um, especially with the air cooler on. And then behind that, you can see it, are the hydraulic valve flux, all buff and uh, bar fuel and of course the Nord drive. All quality brand name um, components in this machine. And that is pretty much the corner corner.